I am concerned about um, certain directions that AI could take that would be uh, not good for the future. The, the, I mean, it, it, I think it would be fair to say that like, not all AI futures are benign. Not, not all. Okay. Um, and, and so if you have something, if, 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 this, if we create some digital superintelligence that exceeds us in every way by a lot, um, it's very important that that be benign. Um, and, um, and so actually with, with, uh, with a few others, um, I created uh, OpenAI. Uh, which is uh, an AI, uh, it's a nonprofit actually, it's, so there's, it's, there's no, I, I think the governance structure here is important, because um, we want to make sure that there was not some fiduciary duty to uh, generate um, you know, profit off of the AI technology that's developed. Um, so, uh, so we created this uh, 501c3, um, but, it, but I think it's, it's I think quite different from, I mean like a lot of sort of, 501c3s are, you know, they don't have a high sense of urgency. Um, and they're, like, they're, they're not like, um, you know, they're not really sort of ex developing technology at, 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 a, at a fast pace, but OpenAI is. Uh, so OpenAI has a very high sense of urgency and the talent, I think that the people that have joined are, are really, really amazing. Um, um, and, um, and the intent with OpenAI is to democratize AI power. Um, there's a quote that I love from uh, Lord Acton. He was the guy that came up with power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely, um, which is that uh, freedom consists of the distribution of power and despotism in its concentration. And so I think it's important if we have this incredible power of AI that it not be concentrated in the hands of a few and potentially lead to a world that we don't want. And what world is that? What, is the, what do you see, foresee that when you see it? It's difficult. I mean, it's called the singularity because it's, it's difficult to predict um, what, exactly what future that might be, except um, I don't know a lot of people who love the idea of living under a despot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think people generally choose to live in a democracy over a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And the despot would be the computer? Well, the people controlling the computer. Mm -hmm. And do you worry specifically about any of these companies I mentioned who've all seemed to now be kind deep. of be pivoting toward this as the battleground in the next 10 years? I won't name a name, but there is only one. There's only one you're worried about. And they're not preoccupied with making a car that will compete with you, I assume. There's only one. <laughs> yeah. And what, tell, tell me, this is an interesting... It's not about, compa it's not about competing. It's, is there, like, like, this is sort of like, like, what would be the point of competing for, you know, mutual destruction? It's like, there's no, it's not about competing. It's really just about um, trying to increase the probability that the future will be good. That's all. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal of open, of open AI is really just to take the set of actions that are most likely to improve the positive futures. Like if you can think of like the future as a set of, of probability streams that, yep. that, that branch out and then converge, collapse down to a particular event and then branch out again. And uh, there's a certain set of probabilities associated with the future being positive and different type flavors of that. And uh, at OpenAI, we want to try to do, do whatever we can to guide, to, to increase the probability of the good futures happening. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's really what we're trying to do there. Do you there. worry that by making this open, some bad actors may use some of what has been developed to do bad stuff uh, with the power yeah, of AI. Yeah, I mean, that, that is certainly the, 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 I mean, a good rebuttal to that. Um, however, I think if AI power is widely distributed, um, then, and there's not, uh, say, one entity that has some super AI that is a million times smarter than anything else, you know, if, if instead the AI power is broadly distributed, and to the degree that we can link uh, AI power to um, each individual's will, um, so like you, you know, you would have your AI agent, you knew it, like everyone would have their sort of AI agent, and then if somebody did try to do something really terrible, well, then uh, the collective will of others could overcome that bad actor. Um, 
which you can't do if, if there's one AI that's you know, a million times better than everything and else. And it's proprietary. And it's, yeah, it either has its own will or more likely, at least in the beginning, is controlled by you know, some small set of people. So uh, I think that's, that's really the, the risk. I mean, um, you know, there's, there's always been these arguments, like what's the, what's the best form of government? Um, you know, I'm a big fan of, I think it was Churchill, like you know, democracy is the, the worst form of government except for all the others. The best of the available alternatives that I can come up with, and maybe somebody else can come up with a better approach uh, or, or better outcome, is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or a uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator of a country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any, um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's, who's going to control that. So it, it's not as I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more, it's, uh, the concern is that some, someone um, may use it in a way that is bad. Um, or, or, and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, that somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That, that I think is quite a big danger. So I think we must have democratization of AI technology and make it widely available. Um, and that's you know, the reason that obviously uh, uh, Yumi and the, re the rest of the team uh, you know, created OpenAI, um, was to help, uh, with the democr help, help spread out um, AI technology so it doesn't get concentrated in the hands of a few. Finally, uh, you, Elon, uh, as far as I know, never ever expressed any concerns about uh, the AI, right? I'm just wondering if you've- It'll be fine. If, <laughs> does, if there is any, any uh, <laughs> ch yeah, concerns, you, in particular, any concerns that you, where you see there's a very clear thing we should be doing now that, that are gonna help? Uh, well, I, I'm trying to think of like, <clears throat> you know, what, what, what is an actual, Good future. What does that actually look like, um, or at least bad, or and how you want to characterize it? Um, uh, because it, it, um, the point that was made earlier, I think maybe by, maybe by Sam and, and and maybe by others, that we're headed towards either superintelligence or civilization ending. Those are those like the two things that are like it, that that'll happen. Intelligence will keep advancing. The only thing that would benefit from advancing. Is, is something that puts civilization into stasis or destroys civilization. So then we have to figure out what is a world that would, we would like to be in where there is this um, uh, digital superintelligence. Um, I think the, uh, and, then, and then another point that I think is really important to appreciate is that um, we are, all of us already are cyborgs. Um, so you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your, your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman. But by far, you have more, more power, more capability than the President of the United States had you know, 30 years ago. Um, if you have an internet link, uh, you, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of Earth instantly. Um, I mean, these are magical powers. Uh, that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman uh, and a cyborg. Um, the limitation is one of bandwidth. So we're, we're bandwidth constrained, particularly on output. Uh, so uh, our input is much better, but our output is extremely slow. Um, you know, if you want to be generous, you could say maybe it's a few hundred bits per second or a kilobit or something like that output. Um, a bit, you know, the way we, we output is like we have our little meat sticks <laughs> that we move very slowly <laughs> and, and push buttons or tap, tap a little screen. Uh, and, and that's just extremely slow. Um, and, you know, compare that to a computer which can communicate at the terabit level. There's a very big orders of magnitude differences. The, our input is much better because of vision. Um, but even that could be enhanced significantly. I think, I think that the, the two things that are needed for, for a, good, a future that we would 
look at and conclude is good, most likely, is we have to solve that bandwidth constraint um, with, a, with a direct neural interface. I think a high bandwidth interface to the cortex. Um, so that we can have a digital tertiary layer that's more, full, more fully symbiotic with, uh, with the rest of us. Like we've got, we've got the cortex and the limbic system, which seem to work together pretty well. They've got good bandwidth, whereas the bandwidth to our digital tertiary layer is, is weak. Um, so, so I think if, if we can solve that bandwidth issue um, and then um, AI can be widely available. The, AI, the, the analogy to a nuclear bomb is not exactly correct. It, it's, it's, not, it's not as though it's going to explode and create a mushroom cloud. Um, it, it, it's more like if, if, if there were just a few people that had it, they, they would be able to be, be essentially dic dictators of Earth. Or, 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 you know, whoever acquired it, and, and, and if, if it was limited to a smaller people, they would, and it was ultra smart, they, were, they would have dominion over Earth. So I think it's extremely important that it be widespread and that we solve the bandwidth uh, issue. And if we do those things, then, then it will be tied to our consciousness, tied to our will, um, tied to the sum of individual human will, um, and, and everyone would have it. So it would be sort of still uh, a relatively even playing field. In fact, it would be probably more egalitarian than today. This is the largest global government summit. We have over 139 government here. If you want to advise government official to be ready for the future, what is three things or three advice you'll give them? Well, I think the, the first bit of advice would be to really pay, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is, we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. Hi, my name is Chris LaFleur. Um, I work for Congress for Representative John Conyers. A couple days ago, I read about you talking about uh, artificial intelligence and the dangers of it, uh, and how as a, uh, as a businessman, you are totally against regulation and stuff like that, but as a, you know, a human being, you think it's critical that we get ahead of this issue. Yeah. Uh, can you please elaborate on um, like why um, what are you seeing that we don't get to see and uh, what, as a policymaker, I should be looking to do to sort of, I guess, protect us all? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, um, I think it, it, it is difficult to appreciate just how far um, artificial intelligence has advanced and how far it is advancing um, because we have a double exponential at work. Uh, we have an exponential increase in hardware capability, um, and we have an exponential increase um, in software talent that is going into AI. Um, so whenever you have a double exponential, it's very difficult to predict. Um, people's predictions are almost always going to be too conservative in terms of thinking it'll be further out than it is. Um, you know, you start to see things like, um, I don't know if you've seen like the, the videos where you can sort of really quite accurately video simulate uh, someone um, and put words in their mouth that they never spoke. Um, you just Google this, it's really pretty amazing. Um, and then they, they had something called a generative adversarial network, uh, had, had two of them um, compete with one another to make the most convincing video. So one would generate the video and then the other one would identify where it, it, it looked fake. And, and then that, that would, the other one would fix that and then and they'd go back and forth to the point where you couldn't tell which one was the real, real video and which one was the fake one. Um, so the degrees of freedom to which artificial intelligence is able to apply itself are in, in really increasing, I think, by 10 orders of magnitude a year. 
that's, re that's really crazy. Um, so I think, uh, and, and we're starting, and this is on hardware that is really not well suited for neural nets. Um, you know, uh, like a GPU is maybe an order of magnitude better than a CPU, but something, but a, um, a chip that is designed optimally for neural nets is an order of magnitude better than a GPU. Um, and that is, there are a whole bunch of neural net optimized chips coming out um, either late this year or next year. Um, so I think we should, I think, that, you know, the part of the role of government is to make sure the public is uh, safe, like to take care of public safety issues. And I think, so I think the right move is to establish some government regulatory agency, which at first is just there to gain insight. So um, it's not about like shooting from the hip and just putting in rules before anyone knows anything. But you've got to set up the agency. It's got to gain insight. Once that insight is gained, then start applying rules and regulations. Um, we have that for the, you know, for aircraft, the FAA, we've got that for cars, we've got that for, uh, you know, drugs, for food. Um, and I don't think anyone wants the FAA to go away or the FDA to go away or, you know, um, any of those regulatory agencies. Um, I think we just need to make sure people do not cut corners on AI safety. It's going to be a, it's going to be a real big deal. Um, and it's going to come on like a, like a tidal wave. So. The question here is a lot of experts in AI don't share the same level of concern that you do about the dangers oh. of AI. Fools. What, what Famous speci last words. What, spe what specifically do you believe that they don't? Um, well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart and dumber than we think we are um, by a lot. So th th this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Doll 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then, uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. <laughs> and Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. Um, nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, the, those same experts uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other, and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. Um, so the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. Uh, we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. I think that's the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. And how do we do that? I mean, if, if we take it that it's inevitable at this point, that some version of AI is coming down the line, how do we, how do we steer through that? Well, I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I mean, I think one should generally err on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And so therefore, there needs to be a public body that 
um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. So what happened with you where you decided or you be took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like, what, was there any specific thing or was it just the inevitability of our future? I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. Are people more inclined to listen today? It seems like an issue that's brought up more often over the last few years than it was maybe five, ten years ago. It seemed like science fiction. Maybe they will. So far they haven't. I think people don't, like the, normally the way that regulations work is very slow, very slow indeed. So usually there'll be something, some new technology, it will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking. Then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. If you look at, say, automotive regulations, how long did it take for seat belts to be, to be implemented, to be required? You know, the auto industry fought seat belts, I think, for more than a decade, successfully fought any regulations on seat belts, even though the numbers were extremely obvious. If you had a seatbelt on, you would be far less likely to die or be seriously injured. It was unequivocal. And the industry fought this for years successfully. Eventually, after many, many people died, regulators insisted on seatbelts. This, this time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. And you feel like this is decades away or years away from being too late? If you have this fatalistic attitude and you yeah. feel like it's going, we're in a, almost like a doomsday countdown. It's not necessarily a doomsday countdown. It's, it's a- Out of control countdown? Out of control, yeah. People call it the singularity, and uh, that's that's probably a good way to think about it. It's, it's a singularity. It's hard to predict, like a black hole, what what happens past the event horizon. Right. So diff- once it's implemented, it's very different because it it will once be able to. Once the out of the bottle, what's right. going to happen? And it will be able to improve itself. Pro- yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation, very very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous, biological, shitting, pissing thing trying to stop the gods. No, stop. We like, we like living with a finite lifespan and, and watching you know, Norman Rockwell paintings. It could be terrible, and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Do you think that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now or do you think it will s- replace us? Well, that's the scenario, the, 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 the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. Like For if, us. Yes. Like if you, if you can't beat it, join it. <laughs> 
that's <laughs> yeah you know um so from a long-term existential standpoint that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI because we have a bandwidth problem you just can't communicate through your fingers it's too slow it, for sure you're you're getting the warning out to some people yeah yeah I mean I, I, I was really going on the warning quite quite a lot I was warning everyone I could you ever met with Obama and just for one reason like just to watch talk out. about AI yes and what did he say so what about Hillary <laughs> worry about her first shh everybody be quiet no he, he listened <laughs> he certainly listened um, I met with Congress I met with I, I was at a meeting of all 50 governors and talked about just AI danger and I Talked to everyone I could. No one seemed to realize where this was going. Is it that, or do they just assume that someone smarter than them is already taking care of it? Because when, when people hear about something like AI, it's almost abstract. It's almost, it's almost like it's so, it's so hard to wrap your head around it. it By is. the time it already happens, it'll be too late. Yeah. I think they didn't quite understand it or didn't think it was near term or not sure what to do about it. And I said, like, you know, an obvious thing to do is to just establish a, a committee, government committee, to gain insight, you know, before before you do oversight, before you do make regulations, you should, like, try to understand what's going on. Um, and then if you have an insight committee, then the once they learn what's going on, get up to speed, then they can make maybe some rules or propose some rules, and and that would be probably a safer way to go about things. It seems, I mean, I, I know that it's probably something that the government's supposed to handle, but it seems like I wouldn't want the, I don't want the government to handle this. Who do you want to handle I want it? you to handle this. Oh, geez. Yeah. I feel like you're the one who could ring the bell better. Because if, if Mike Pence starts talking about AI, I'm like... Shut up, bitch. You don't know anything about AI. Come on, man. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He yeah, but I don't demons. have the power to regulate other companies. <laughs> what am I supposed to? I, like, right. Like, but maybe know. companies could agree. How should people think about artificial intelligence? Like if you're going to explain it to one of your younger uh, children, you would say artificial intelligence is what? Uh, it's just digital intelligence. And um, as the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. When you say that we'll exceed human intelligence, at some point soon, the machine's going to be smart, not just smarter, like exponentially smarter than any of us. Ensuring that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good, seems like a smart move. But we're way behind on that. Yes, we're not paying attention. Are we worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity. That's insane. Before we get, get to like solutions. We're like children in a playground. This could be a huge problem for society. What are the scenarios that scare you most? Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We're evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had nu nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI mm -hmm. destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it's, it's, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They were just in the way. Couldn't AI, even in this moment, just with the technology that we have before us, 
be used in some fairly destructive ways. You can make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. People just think this stuff is of, of sci-fi novels and movies and it's so far away, but yeah. every time I hear you speak, it's like, well, no, this stuff is sitting, it's, it's right here. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. Uh, that would not seem like pro propaganda. So these are deep fakes? Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. W within milliseconds, it, could, it can sh um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are n not people. Like, how, how, do you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? One reason that regulators and others are a little bit in denial about this is the speed, the pace of change. What is the consequence of that speed of change? The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear. Right. And we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, if you have a linear response to an exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. Where we discussed last time, I asked you what is the most important project or the most important topic for you to deal with in the foreseeable future, and you said that is truly the role that AI is going to play in our society. Could you explain yeah. why and why that is a big opportunity, but also seems to worry you? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I mean, humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time. And that is going to change with uh, what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way. Could, could even simulate a human. Uh, so, uh, you know, th th this is something we should be concerned about. I think there should be uh, government oversight of uh, AI developments, um, especially super advanced AI. It's just. This is anything that is a potential uh, danger to the public. We generally agree that this should have uh, government oversight to ensure that the the public safety is taken care of. Because um, you feel that one day uh, the uh, uh, mankind could serve the machines and not the other way around. Honestly, when I see people on their phones, uh, I think we're already serving it's the machine. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's uh, answering the questions. You know, every time you do a search or add information, you're sort of building this, the, the, the digital group mind. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the advent of artificial general intelligence is called the singularity for a reason, because just like a black hole, which is a singular, singularity, it's difficult to predict what will happen. Um, so it's not as though the advent of AGI is necessarily bad, but it's bad as one of the possible outcomes. And when is singularity in the, in the definition of uh, Ray Kurzweil going to happen? Um, well, I think you're saying he, he, he's predicting 2025. I think that's uh, reasonably accurate. Mm -hmm. And how can it be avoided that is then uh, more a threat for humanity than an opportunity? Is it a question of governance so that there is not too much power yeah. in one or in few hands? Or how would, you, yeah. how would you make sure that it goes into the right direction? I think we should have uh, a, a government oversight, just like we do. We have uh, government oversight and regulation of uh, cars and aircraft and uh, food and pharmaceuticals. These are all, uh, you know, there's a, there are regulators that oversee uh, these developments to ensure public safety. Um, and I think. Uh, yeah, auto, uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk, and so it should be. It's, I think it's very important to for uh, regulators to keep an eye on that. Who and should own the data, data by then? I think everyone should own their own data. Like individuals should own their data, um, and it certainly shouldn't be tricked by some terms and conditions of a website. And suddenly you don't own your data. That's crazy. 
Uh, who reads those terms and conditions anyway? So, uh, but I think it's just, you know, like we wouldn't let people develop uh, a nuclear bomb in the backyard just for the hell of it, you know. That, that seems crazy. So digital superintelligence, I think, has the potential to be more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. So, yeah, we should uh, just, somebody should be keeping an eye. It's, we can't have the inmates running the asylum here. Which is a global uh, issue because if we do well, but uh, China has other rules and uh, a different regulatory framework, uh, that is another uh, yeah, I don't, I don't challenge. Think, yeah, I, I generally like that. This is one of the rebuttals I get from those developing AI. And Tesla is also developing a form of AI with self driving, but it's a very narrow form of AI. Just mm -hmm. like, um, it, like the car is not going to wake up Sunday one day and take over the world. Um, so, so it's, it's uh, but, but the, the rebuttal I get is like, well, you know, China is going to have unfettered uh, AI development, and so if, if we have regulations and that slows us down, then China will have it. And I'm like, look, I, from my conversations with uh, government officials in China, they are, they, they, they're quite concerned about AI as well, and they, uh, in fact, they're probably more likely to have a good oversight than I think other countries. Hi, Elon Zia Yusuf from uh, BCG. Uh, could you talk a little bit about AI and robotics? And you've expressed concerns in the past, but you now building some as well. What do you see as the issues that we do have to solve on that front? Well, I've said for a long time, I think AI safety is a really big deal. Um, and we should have some regulatory agency that is overseeing uh, AI safety. Um, um, but there is not yet currently any such thing. And, and just generally, any kind of regulatory agency done by the government will usually takes years to put in place. Um, so, um, you know, I, after uh, the population collapse issue, I think AI safety is probably the second biggest um, threat to the future of civilization. Um, and, um, yeah. Like I said, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Um, I mean, Tesla is arguably the, the world's biggest robot maker because like, we have basically semi-autonomous semi cars that will ultimately be fully autonomous. Um, and we are building a humanoid robot that will be basically like, um, like, like the car, but with legs. Um, so, um, and I, I kind of, uh, Held off on doing that for a while because, you know, I, was, I, I certainly don't want to hasten the AI apocalypse. But clearly, with the, look at Boston Dynamics and, and like this humanoid robots are going to happen. So um, they're either going to happen with or without Tesla. So it's like Tesla I've got a little bit more. I mean, a lot more ability to ensure uh, robotics safety and AI. Um, and I'll try my best to, to do that. 2017, you said uh, the Third World War will be a war with or about AI. Now we have a very conventional war. Can AI help? One of the reasons for uh, World War III would be um, if one country has or one place has advanced AI technology and the other powers want it uh, or they're worried about some country ga gaining uh, advanced AI that would, would um, give them a strong advantage in war, then they may be tempted to uh, attack before the country that is developing the strong AI has that uh, for use in, in weapons technology. You have recently presented Optimus oh, yes. Human Robot, uh, and you shared great expectations what that could do for the world. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit your motivation? I assume it's not only about uh, the first visit to Mars that could be done by Optimus. It is more than that, a game changer in AI. Could you share a little bit your, your vision? Yeah, I mean, with respect to AI and robotics, I always approach these things with some trepidation because uh, I certainly do not want to be play a hand in uh, anything that could potentially be harmful to humanity. Um, now, humanoid robots, they're clearly happening. 
I mean, you look at like Boston Dynamics, they, their demonstrations are better every year. Um, so there will be humanoid robots. I mean, the rate of advancement of AI is very rapid. Even if Tesla stopped doing AI, that we, I think we're still on a track to develop uh, artificial general intelligence, um, mini intelligence smarter than the smartest human. On, on a more a sort of near-term time frame, I think artificial intelligence is something we need to be um, quite concerned about and really be uh, attentive to the safety of, of AI. Um, you mentioned uh, ChatGPT earlier. Um, you know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Um, essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety. And, um, and so, and so I, 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 with a number of other people, um, created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, and now it is closed source and for profit. I, I don't have any stake in OpenAI anymore, nor, nor am I on the board, nor do I control it in any way. Um, but the, the chat GPT, I think, has illustrated to uh, people just how advanced AI has become. Um, the, the, because the AI has been advanced for a while, it just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really ChatGPT has done is just put an, an accessible user interface on AI technology that is um, that has been present for a few years, um, and there are much more advanced versions for that that are coming out. Um, so I think we, you know, I think we, we need to really be. I, mean, I think we need to regulate AI safety, frank, frankly, um, because if you think of any. Um, Technology, which is potentially a risk to uh, civil to, to people, like if it's an aircraft or uh, you know cars or uh, medicine, we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee the public safety of, of cars and planes and medicine, and um, I think we we should probably we should have a a similar sort of regulatory oversight for artificial intelligence because um, it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. Um, so, um, and this may slow, slow down AI a little bit, but I think that, that might also be a good thing.